Hey everybody, how's it going? Alright, so I don't normally do this, uh, but for just like an interesting entry uh, today, uh, I wanted to share with everybody this um, strange moment I had about five years ago when I was um, quote unquote invited to the uh, Wisecrack podcast, uh, Show Me the Meaning. Um, I won't go into too much detail, basically what happened was uh, back in the day you could be a patron on Patreon which don't even get me into that whole Patreon thing I don't like it at all I think it's disingenuous but I was such a wisecrack fan and I always wanted to meet Jared in one way or another you see wisecrack back in the day when Jared was there it was fucking amazing uh, YouTube channel so anyway, um, the shtick was uh, pay $100, that was the tier, and uh, one of the promises was that you got to be on an episode of uh, Show Me the Meaning as a guest appearance on the, uh, on the podcast. And so I did that. Uh, I wasn't scummy about it at all. I paid $100 the first month. Second month, uh, I sent a private message. I asked them, hey, I want to be on the show. They actually responded to me. They told me, all right, so we got a John Wick 2 episode coming up soon. Would you like to be on it? And I was like, yeah, sure. And I actually got to personally talk to Jared and one of her, one of his coworkers. <clears throat> and um, it was a fucking amazing experience. So uh, I actually had to delve deep into this. I couldn't find it on YouTube. There is a live version of John Wick 2 the the episode but my section isn't um you know added in there because we actually had to record it um through google hangout and then they added it as a segment at about the 50 minute mark i'm i'm, I'm not really sure uh so this is the um this is the the uh, conversation we had, and it was pretty cool. We shot the shit. Uh, Jared is an amazing guy. You know, I love all the guys at, at Wisecrack. I really miss him. Jared, I love you, bro. You're the best. I'm still waiting for that Pauly Shore interview. So without further ado, here you go. This is the full segment of me on the Show Me the Meaning podcast. All right, now we're moving on to our segment where we have a conversation with one of our patrons. If you guys would also like to become a patron, check out wisecrackplus.com and you yourselves can be on the podcast. So today we've got Mauricio from Argentina. Hey, um, I'm doing fine. Welcome. Thanks no, for coming, dude. Thank you for supporting us. It really means a lot. Uh, thank you for coming to hang out with us. Uh, first question, have you seen John Wick or John Wick 2? And what do you think about them? Uh, yeah, I was, um, I was working. I was actually working at a cinema when John Wick 2 came out oh, hell and yeah. um, I had no clue what it was. <laughs> uh, I, I saw the poster and I was just like, this has got to be some bullshit. Right. I was first, that was, so I'm serious. That was the first thing I thought about John Wick. Uh, I didn't know what it was and I thought it was going to be really bad. Were you not a Keanu Reeves fan? No, I've been, a, I've been a Keanu Reeves fan my whole life. And that's, that's actually what worried me about seeing the poster because you know, it's been a really long time since the matrix and I didn't know what was going on. And then all of a sudden in one year, he like, I find out about two movies. Uh, the whole, do, you, do you guys see the whole truth? No. no. What's that? That's a, um, that's a Netflix. Well, it's not a Netflix. It was an, it was in, I think it was in theaters also, but it's pretty, you can say, I think you can see it on Netflix. It's a movie about uh, Keanu Reeves. He plays a, I don't know if he's a pro bone or lawyer or something. Huh. Um, I haven't seen it anyway. It doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, so I was just like, okay, if I, 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 I kind of got like that Nicolas Cage feeling in the back of my head, like, <laughs> you like, know what I mean? Like Bangkok <laughs> dangerous or something stupid like that. Like, no, like, you know, just like ghost writer yeah. feeling like just really bad movies coming out of nowhere. Did you like it when you finally oh, did see it? Oh yeah. It was fucking amazing. Yeah, it <laughs> was really yeah. fucking good. Yeah, I'm, I'm a huge fan. So I wanted to spend this time just to kind of get an idea. I want uh, the people to kind of hear what uh, our listeners are like and uh, kind of just get them to know you. So um, and since it's a movie podcast, I want to kind of do that through the lens of movies. So my second question to you is, is there ever been a movie that changed the way you looked at the world? And if so, what movie was it? 
Oh, um, <laughs> I actually, uh, I read about this question in, um, Jesus Christ. Uh, you, you gotta, you gotta, uh, there's one movie you gotta watch. And, um, well, I, I don't know if you guys have seen, uh, the Congress. Who's in that Congress. Is that a, is that oh, a, oh, oh, that's with Robin Wright. Yeah. I have that's seen that the one. movie. That, that movie is like just bananas. Like if, if anybody, like anybody hearing here, this, that hasn't seen it, do not even like watch the trailer. Do you just have to watch that movie? <laughs> well, uh, can I because, not spoil the kind of overall visual conceit? It's like, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. It's like half animated. And then the second yeah. half. It's, oh, I know what you're talking about. This was a fantastic fest. Did you yeah, see it? I did not see it, but uh, uh, I remember hearing all about it. Yeah. So and you like, loved it, huh? It blew your mind. It worked for you. No, it's just like the whole like second act is so um, it's so abstract, and you're like, this is some bullshit. I can't believe I'm still watching this. And then the <laughs> ending, just like you're like, oh my god, how could I have been so stupid? <laughs> this is this is actually happening, and you know, you kind of get that feeling like this is. This is kind of like the real world, but you know, the movie, uh, it's, it's really messed. It's actually, I started crying. That was like really sad, really, really good movie. If I remember correctly, I have seen this movie. The movie is mostly about Robin Wright dealing with basically it's it, the movie is like her expression of what it was like. I'm sorry. I have seen this. She, to, to she be, plays to be, herself. Yeah. Right? And it's, it's her, she plays herself. Yeah. Yeah. It's her dealing with being a objectivized actress after the princess bride and losing all her fame and realizing that people just want her for her beauty. Right. Yeah. Something they talk like about that. Forrest Gump and stuff. Right. Like, in it. Yeah. I, I, I saw this way after Fantastic Fest. That's why I didn't remember it. But yeah, I did not love that movie, <laughs> but I definitely can see it, it. It Like once it gets to the very end, you're, I mean, it does do a really good job of kind of twisting your expectations i feel like um it's, no, made it's, by really, it's really cool i compare i compare it to um john wick in the sense that uh well john wick is a lot let's be honest is a, is a lot uh simpler film but um you know i just love the fact that there is no hand holding at all yeah. and i've only watched it once i swear to god i've only watched it once um you know, I love I love the small roles, uh, the uh, you know the, the cameos and and uh, some of the actors like Paul Giamatti is really fucking cool to see them again. And uh, it's a it's a real shame that movie flopped like for real. Yeah. Like nobody knows about that movie. I I, yeah, I never saw heard it, of it. I saw it by accident. It's based on a it's loosely based on a book called uh, the Futuristic uh, No the Futurological Congress. <laughs> yeah, Austin, you you need to see that, dude. You you would love it. Yeah. It is it's it's, it's a wank fest and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see uh, Waltz with Bashir, Austin? God no. Okay, it's by the it's you like the are, same you, animation. You guys are gonna style. remember me. You're gonna be like Jesus Christ. Like, like, uh, it's, <laughs> it's just it's it's just bananas. All right, but my next question is: uh, What do you think is the most relevant movie in the world right now, or more specifically, what's the most relevant movie to your life? What movie speaks to what you see around the world right now, or what you see in your life? That answer is unfortunately going to suck really bad. Oh, don't all right, like let's it. hear it. Um, well, Infinity War, obviously. Okay. Yeah. Go on. Unfortunately, I, I, why, say, why I unfortunately? say unfortunately, and I don't mean it. Uh, why is he cheering? Is he cheering because he thinks I'm going to say it sucks? <laughs> no. no. Why are you cheering, Ryan? <laughs> no, I, I, no I, I just think that's a good movie, and I, I, I can see that. You know, you, we fucking as a, as a, as an, as a nation have, have uh, uh, invested what. 15 years of our lives of pop cultureness into the into that movie so i can see that <laughs> culminating to be in the most it's relevant just, movie um, i think i think it um I, I it's everywhere man i can't get away from it i wake up in the morning i listen to podcasts i watch youtube the only things i get many more are um these freaking uh discussions and what's coming up next and it's just i'm living in in marvel right now, <laughs> that's what that's what fucking pisses me off you know, yeah. I really, I, I really, really love the the movie, and uh, you know, most of the Marvel movies. But it, it's almost, I almost feel like this is like my whole life. I've just been in like this Disney test tube. You know what I mean? <laughs> I love animated shit. 
That's such I a good way to put anim- it. With animated movies by with Disney buying King Toy Story, and now I'm older, and Disney bought everything that I ever cared about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really that's scared. Amazing. That's so true, man. So, <laughs> what? It's I guess really sad. If, if that's, I mean, uh, uh, what do you think is going to happen? And and the second one, what's your best guess? Ex- educated guess. Are those characters going to come uh, back, and how? Well, you know, they, uh, the big the big news right now is how all of their contracts are starting to expire. And, uh, well, Chris Evans, at yeah, least. Chris he Evans just finished. He just yeah. finished. He said it was like, I think it was the last time that he played that, he, that he plays that character. So. He's done. He's wrapping. He's ra- he wrapped up at Avengers Four, and he's he's done, man. He he's, he's probably done now, going yeah. to like yeah. theater or something. But don't you think a tweet like that? Away from all that? Don't you think a tweet like that is just a good bargaining technique? You know, it's like no, oh, no, no. He really he really doesn't want to do it anymore. Yeah, it's like um, I mean, I it really it, it saved his career because let's be honest, the guy he's a great guy, but uh, his only his only big thing was you know. He couldn't. He couldn't even pull off being a superhero before with uh, what is this movie called? Oh, Fantastic Fanta- Four! Right, Fantastic Four. It's, he's just so stupid in that movie. I was like, <laughs> this is a cringy ass actor. And then he pulled off uh, Captain America, and, and he's been like, you know, a sensation since then. See, I think I have my buddy and I talk about this uh, about how like some guys are just too good looking sometimes to be taken seriously as actors. And like yeah. Chris Pine is one of those guys. So what you got to do is you got to give him a beard and a hat. And when you give him <laughs> a beard and a hat, like you can do with Chris Pine and you can do it with, uh, with Chris Evans too. Like in Snowpiercer, yeah. give him a beanie, give him a beard. <laughs> Make and him dirty. He can do a serious role. Cause he's actually, I think that Chris Evans, he, he's come a long way from not another teen movie acting days. Right. I like I actually movie. think he's a very good actor. It's just, you got to get him the funny. right role. He was funny. He was funny in not another team movie, but the only reason we it was cheesy, right? But that's okay. Yeah, I give him a th- pass. Not- I watched. I watched not another team movie the other the other night, like a few like a few months ago, or a few weeks ago, and uh, it's a it's actually it's actually good. It's a funny movie. You know, and yeah. he does a good job. It's just that now that he's Captain America, it's like we look back and he was like, oh, it's Chris Evans. You know, I didn't know who he was before. I uh, know, right? <laughs> but but I, I think that this is like. I think it's like the perfect time if he does get out. Is this like the perfect time for him to go into his? I'm going to be taken seriously as an actor now, so I'm going to have a scruffy face and wear a hat, and I'm going to do like serious roles with John Hillcoat or something like that. <laughs> you know, he might hey, I could see him eventually like getting a nomination or something. I don't know. Yeah, I think so. This is yeah, like I kind of he's got. Hey, the, but you know, speaking of speaking chops. of actors getting breaks, I'm really excited about Captain Marvel. Like Brie Larson is the shit. I love her in Room, and my girlfriend is absolutely in love with, with Brie Larson. I saw her in Community. I didn't even know who she was. That's another example of someone like that gets that's going to get a lot of rep. You know, after after their big AAA movie, uh, I really like Brie Larson. I think she's gonna she's gonna pull it off. I missed Room, but yeah. I remember Ryan telling me it's great. Oh, dude, yeah, don't read anything about it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, don't read anything about it. I think we should do it on the podcast. Fuck, we should do it next week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, I hate those. I actually hate those movies that um that you know go in for the shock value. But yeah, she does a good job. It's a good movie. All right. So you you live in Argentina. Uh, what are Argentinian movies like? Are there any ar- famous Argentinian movies that we may have seen or may have heard Wild of? Wild Tales, baby. Oh, is that from Argentina? Wild Tales. That's my one. Right. That was my favorite movie. <laughs> yeah. Me and Ryan saw that movie yeah, together. We loved it. I, I uh I, I've been actually like a, a little bit like practicing this one because um I am actually not an, a big Argentinian film fan and uh, any Argentinians hearing me are gonna like come knocking at my door tomorrow <laughs> and uh, kick my ass because we have this thing like you you have to praise you know national stuff but I have a lot of things against it you know what what the stuff that happens here you mean just the movies that yeah, come out you don't happen to like yeah what don't, what don't you like about them. No, they are amazing movies. Um, Nine Queens. Uh, here's two examples that I'll give you. There's a movie here called Nueve Reinas, which is Nine Queens. Um, okay. The movie is with Ricardo Darín, the same one from uh, uh, Wild Tales, and and the second one I'm about to mention. Um, oh yeah. They yeah. It came out. The movie came out in 2000. It was like got like 24 bullshit nominations. It was a really good movie <laughs> here. It's really important. Yeah. And then uh, they made an. American adaptation is just called Criminal, 
and it's with this guy. Oh my god, I wrote his name down because I couldn't remember it. Uh, you know, you guys know who John C. Riley is? Oh yeah, oh yeah, the Adult Swim guy. Well, no, I always knew him as the the Adult Swim guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, I always know him as uh, I see Chess Brockman from Boogie Nights. He's like really important. He's a really important dude. And uh, well, he does like he does the main protagonist in that movie, and then you also have Diego Luna, and. Um, that's about it. So then, then um, basically any like decent movie that you've ever heard about from Argentina pretty much got an adaptation later to American film, okay. like um, The Secret in Their Eyes, for example. Yes. With this with this one guy, uh, I don't want to slaughter his name. Uh, he's this black guy from Doctor Strange. What was the, the um, yeah, you'll never get it. <laughs> um, oh, oh, oh. He was uh, his, like, his, I know like, who you're talking character. about. He, I know the character you're talking about. I don't know the guy's yeah, name. He's the one who pops up in the post credits and then kills and kills the guy. Right, because he's and like uh, possessed he's, or something. He's going to be the bad guy in the second one, probably. Right. Anyway, he he does um, Ricardo Darín's uh, part in. Um, so Ricardo Darín's like this really important actor here. He's like one of the, like maybe the top five actors, and you know when what pisses me off the top ten movies ever. That's that guy. So that's the world I live in, you okay. know, and it, 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 oh, it's just a the lot same of, dude. Yeah. It's the same fucking dude. That's the thing. It's like, there's no <laughs> actors here. You know, there's like, there's one, there's a comedy actor. There's a, a, a really important, you know, suspense actor, thriller actor. And, uh, that's, that's, but this uh, is one of the tough struggles that you get in the international market is that everyone thinks, and to an extent they're right. They have to leave wherever they're from and go to Hollywood. You know, like I just watched Blade Runner 2049 last night and I was thinking about Anna de Armas. You know, she's Cuban, but she has to go to Hollywood to make it. I lived in England. I lived in Scotland. I lived in Ireland and I spent a lot of time in Spain. And when you're in the entertainment industry there, all of them talk about how they can't wait to get to Hollywood. They can't wait to get out. And the shitty thing is it is it saps the local industry and the talent away from those regional areas. And so when they try to build, like Scotland is really trying to build up their uh, their entertainment industry. And you get the same thing in the UK. The problem is, is the UK has London and that's powerful, but even still, everyone gets sucked out of there. So all the talent leaves and they go to fucking LA, you know? <laughs> well, this guy, this guy should have taken a break. Well, he actually said in an inter- <laughs> he, he, he actually said in an interview that um, he was going to be, he was, he was going to be cast in um, Too Fast, Too Furious because they wanted a, an, an Argentinian bad guy, you know, the, the one on the yacht with the drugs and shit. And he refused because he was, he was tired of the um, typical Latino trope of, uh, you know, drug dealing bad guys. Pins, yeah. Basically, you wouldn't have seen him on Breaking Bad or anything like that. Right. Has he done, has he done a lot of English speaking roles or no? No, never, never. He's, con- never. he's always refused. This is like a, like a fucking... He's an Argentinian guy purist. Here. Like the, they're the equivalent to an Oscar. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's like, no, nah, well, I'm not going to. He doesn't do need the, that validation. Yeah. He's like, I'm, I'm big over here in my, my whole country. So what, what movie are you looking forward to most? Uh, aside from, aside from anything Marvel, um, Jesus, it could be I Marvel. don't even know what's, I don't even know what's going on anymore. You know <laughs> I'm I mean? kind of in the same boat as you. I mean, I'm looking forward to obviously John Wick three. Oh well, yeah, yeah. Obviously, John Wick three. But um, what I mean is, I only I only go to the theater like two or three times a year, and it's probably for um, Marvel related things. First man. Uh, I went to see Dead. I went to see Deadpool two, and I was like, No, what am I doing here? <laughs> why Why did I pay so much to watch this movie? <laughs> no, we got movie pass down in Argentina. Huh? Do, do you guys have movie pass down there? Is that a thing, or was it a thing? No, no. no. I have to take a bus, and I have to go to another city to. to, to like one of the movie theaters and you know if yeah. you, it's okay if you go alone it's no it's no problem but you want to take the whole family it's uh it's 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 a it's a thing you have to you have to plan it accordingly right. and the movie really better so we watched it, so we watched it, we watched we watched infinity war and then like the next week i went to see deadpool 2 and i was like i i i rather i wanted to watch infinity war again <laughs> <laughs> i hear you <laughs> Well, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. It's just I think I think one of you guys said it once and about Marvel movies. It's like this. It's it would be okay on a streaming service like what's gonna happen now <laughs> with Hulu. Like you know, most of the movies they're they're top, they're good quality. It's just it's gonna reach a point where it's just like the standard isn't gonna be. It's not isn't gonna always be reached. So it's it's not gonna they're not gonna want to put everything in theaters anymore. 
That's my that's my theory. Oh yeah, and that's going to be I good agree. for the rest of us because fucking Disney doesn't let you. This Disney had like cuts deals with people so that like I don't know what it, what how it is that like you can't on opening night or like uh, I don't know during how many weeks they they can only screen like they, they'll only give the movie to to theaters like um, if they have certain amount of um, what are they called like the the rooms you go in to watch the movies. Yeah, certain amount of screens. They they do that exactly. In, they do that here. There are times where if there's like a big screen, like a dome or an IMAX screen, they'll basically if there's, if there's a Star Wars movie coming out or something, Disney will say if you're not playing this movie all month, we're not going to give it to you at all, and it causes exactly. A big and storm. here and here it's three times worse because you have three variations of the same movie. So when Infinity War came out, you'll have the um, dubbed in Spanish version, the dubbed in in English with subtitles version, and then the 3D variations of both of those. So there, there are four screenings for the same movie. Oh, and then the 4D, the 4D. The one with the- <laughs> I fucking love 4D. Jared, I want to hear the, your- the wind that blows in your face. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of 4D, my, my my most anticipated movie of this year is Alita: Battle Angel. Uh, the in, in 4D in 4DX, baby. James Cameron, Robert Rodriguez, 4DX. Are you shitting me? <laughs> I Let's mean, do yeah, it. it sounds like a cool theme park ride. Yeah, exactly. Slash movie. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, all right, last question. What do you think is the worst movie ever made or the worst movie you've seen? The worst movie I've seen. <laughs> do documentaries count? Like, it's sure. not even like those fake ass reality documentary movies that actors make sometimes. Anything. Okay. This is okay. Let's see if you got this one. Um, I used to be a Polly Shore fan. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Hold on, hold on. So this guy, the story is that one time he was a uh, trap. He, he heard from some person that, uh, you know, you could go to Africa. Does anybody know about this? No, he made a do- no. He basically, he made a documentary movie where he goes to Africa to adopt a child. Polly Shore does? Polly Shore. Okay. And then it turns into this weird thing where it looks like Polly Shore is like hanging out with, like the whole thing looks like, like he's just coked out. <laughs> and hanging out with hookers and like um he's got like this cringy like dub of him over the movie like narrating the the adventures and then he's got all these poor african people like like acting for him god like it's really really bad you gotta you gotta look into i don't remember how it's called look into Polly it's, it's called di- adopted adopted <laughs> look into the into the his filmography that yeah and it's really sad because there's actually this like with like this really authentic part where he's talking to these people in this town and he says like see, they're like why do you want to adopt a kid and he's like well you know i want to i want to give him an opportunity you know i want to take him with me and i want to you know i want to give him a, a a better life and one of the guys is just looking at him and it's like well how do you what do you think why do you think your life you, you why do you think your life is better <laughs> and i was like i even i was surprised i was like yeah who is this guy you know i mean in fairness i think he's taken the piss out of like uh you know like when hollywood celebrities go to africa and they like madonna adopt. or, or yeah. angelina jolie yeah um, yeah but I, think, I don't think I, I don't think he pulled it off like if you're trying to say like he was like doing it like ironically to be like as like a, as a satire it didn't it he didn't pull it off very well he you completely know? failed it, 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 it was <laughs> really it was like really insulting it was really really insulting mm. piece of crap and and my sister i got my sister caught me watching it and she was like what is this and i was just like <laughs> I don't know. I, I was watching. I was watching Biodome, and then all of a sudden, this. You know, I used to have this thing where I, I would, I would go through an, an actor's entire filmography. You know. Oh hell yeah! I, I was like interested those directors. in them. And uh, that's how you. That's how you know if you're a fan or not. You know, like for example, I used to think I used. I, I'm. I agree with Jared on a lot of things. You know, like I know you're a big <laughs> Nolan fan, and uh, yeah, yeah, I. I was obsessed with Nolan just about as much as I was obsessed with uh, Keanu Reeves at one point. But then I watched his filmography in chronological order and I realized that I wasn't, you know what I mean? Like, really? Memento's, yeah. Memento's I great. had the opposite experience. I was like, I dug him and then I watched the filmography in order and I was like, this is guys fucking genius. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's great. It's just his formula is so laid out that at one point, 
it's just like um i'm about to give Inter- interstellar another chance because i just uh you know i spend a long time but um, yeah for me it's inception dark knight and dark knight rises like that time when we were at in the theater with dark knight rises uh it, the whole theater was silent we were like like 100 people fucking the thought batman was dead you know what i mean mm-hmm. that, that shit was amazing but mm-hmm. um yeah anyway uh i got off track though the whole what i meant to say was uh, yeah yeah uh, the poly shore movie definitely <laughs> well I, i'm just gonna end on this uh this is actually bonkers that you brought up poly shore because there's a guy who used to work for us who is now Polly Shore's assistant and he is Xavier. He, he called us and he was like, dude, I can probably get Polly Shore on the podcast. I didn't know you were going to yeah. uh, uh, bring that up or not. Yeah, I didn't know if we were supposed to announce it. I was going to be like, well, it's not confirmed yet, so I don't oh, want to no. say anything. Do you want to oh. cut that out? Well, what do you think? Do you think we should cut it out because it would be too? It would be too obvious. It would be too awesome just to Dude, all of a sudden upload. I just, I just, said, I just said Shore. for about five minutes about how he was coked out. And- how, hey, Marisha, how he'll probably will show up coked out. War with Polly Shore in 2018. No, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I actually wanted to meet the guy at one time, but I just, said, I just spent five minutes saying that he was probably on a cocaine binge. <laughs> yeah, but, 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 but he's not going to deny that. That's like, that's like, that's a fact. <laughs> I, I think we should save the announcement. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Well, for you, we're going to make it happen because I was like, I don't know. So, what, wait, wait, before we go, if we do get him on the podcast, what movie do you want us to do? Because we want to do a Polly Shore movie, but which one should we do? Oh, uh, Jesus. Biodome um, and Sino Man, right? Son in law. <laughs> <laughs> Jury duty. Oh, no, no. You know what you can do? You guys are going to hate me. Do fucking Andy Wexler. <laughs> What's that? No, what's the name of that movie with Adam Sandler where he calls everybody to do the movie with him? Uh, it's like the it's like the Infinity War of Adam Sandler movies. Oh, you're talking about like it's, grown uh, ups? Where he, yeah, yeah, Sandy, yeah, Sandy, Sandy, Wexler. Sandy Wexler. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, he's a ca- he's a cameo in this movie. I want you. I want you to ask. Okay. I'll ask him about it. But, we, but like, well, what's a movie that he starred in? There's only a handful, Jared. There's yeah. only like ten of them. I guess we'll do, and there's only about two that are that anyone has seen and are good. So, Encino it's, Man, it's and, Bio- Man and, Bi- and and Biodome. You know, Son in Law is a, a, a runner up, distant runner up. Okay. You know, no, Pauly Shore he is was dead. a voice in. Uh, he was in. The, he was a voice in the Goofy movie. Oh fuck yeah! I love that movie. We'll definitely ask about that. Okay. There is that movie. He was Pauly a, Shore is dead. He was a, he the Leaning Tower of Chisa. <laughs> that's him that's him he plays, he plays like the cool that's sidekick him. guy oh dude no way that's probably sure right, the leaning tower of cheese uh, it's amazing yeah. that we all know the goofy movie yeah wow. and he has, he has he has he has the great question in extremely goofy movie which is why do we all wear gloves <laughs> and does he get an answer <laughs> <laughs> oh man Awesome. All right. Well, Mauricio, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thank you for supporting us on Patreon, man. It really means a lot. It's been great talking to you. Go feed that dog. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Ciao. Yeah, dude, Mauricio, you're awesome, man. That was that was a fun conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I'm I, I'm definitely going to I'm going to go watch Adopted pretty much tonight. Adopted? <laughs> go watch it. Go watch it, please. In HD. <laughs> All right, Mauricio, take it easy, man. All right. Cool. Cool. Take care.